Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, so this is now part two of a two-part video on the install of a BTT Big Tree Tech motherboard into a Creality CR6 SE printer. I've already uploaded part one showing all the actual install of the motherboard and as explained in that video it was getting a bit long i was going to put this bit on the end of that one but i've done a separate video here on just the install of the new community 6 firmware to that new motherboard so we're going to get straight into that now uh, the next bit you see is the bit i'd already recorded that i was going to tag on the end of it and uh, so we'll uh, we'll take it from there get straight into the the install of the firmware now so we're going to carry on now on uploading the latest at this stage community firmware version 6 to the motherboard now i'd already done that i would i've been using the beta version and, and that on it no problem and the final version no problem but what i've done just to show you how to do it and how it works i've reverted back to version 5 firmware so we're taking it now as if my printer had the version 5 firmware on. Just like in my last video I did on, on it, where I go into more detail about formatting your, your SD cards and stuff like that. So you may want to check out that video first. Again, I'll, I'll try and put a link up here about it uh, or at the end. But uh, it's well worth looking for that. But this is upgrading this latest BTT motherboard to the latest version 6 firmware so i'll go into where to download it from everything and everything now it is a bit slow and drawn out as you know with all my videos but as i've mentioned before that's uh, when people are clicking around the screen so fast on a tutorial video or whatever i just can't keep up so uh, i'm getting long in the tooth now and i need to take things slowly so i hope you don't mind um, if you want to speed it up, just to speed it up yourself. But I've done it all in real time on downloading the firmware, where it's from, putting it on the SD card, and then putting it on the printer. So, uh, so first of all, I'll show you where we get the required firmware for the screen and the motherboard. It's two separate lots of firmware from, and uh, how to put them on the SD card. And then we'll show you uploading it to the printer so we'll do that now okay so to get to the place to download the community firmware from i find the best place to go for the latest version is here to begin with this is seb's website one of the main developers of the firmware and all the links that you'll need can be found on his website plus tons and tons of information on the latest release of the firmware and what it does it's well worth going through here his site and uh, for all this info here he's been kind enough to give me a mention here tom's manchet on the uh, the how-to i did on the version 5 so thanks for that seb but uh, tons and tons of information here and there's a link there that's the link you want to download it from github and if we click on that one that takes you here to the latest one uh, released 21 days ago this is the full public release now and it's called tune it love it and uh, yeah very appropriate title so it's located on this page right at the very very bottom so if we scroll down here right at the very last thing you find here is this thing assets obviously if, if you see it like that just click on it to open it up and all the versions of the firmware we're after are listed here now they're all cr6 community firmwares and at the uh, version 6 community firmware 6 here final but each one varies depending on which model cr6 you've got the max or the standard se and also the motherboard you've got so if you've got the early motherboard like i had it's this one here at the bottom 
the 452, uh, the 453 motherboard. This is the version you want, but we now want the Big Tree Tech, the BTT motherboard with the stock Creality screen. So the first one we come across is here. It says Big TT SKR. That's the, the their motherboard board number CR6 with the Big Tree Tech TFT screen. That's not what we want. We're not using their screen. We're using the stock Creality one. So it's here, the Big Tree Tech motherboard with stock Creality screen. So that's the one we want. So if we click on that, and I'm using Firefox, but if you're using Google Chrome or whatever, you'll get the, the different download box there or whatever. So we we'll click there. And if we now open up here and open the containing folder, there it is, the CR6 community, CR6 final, the BTT SKR with the standard, with the stock reality screen. So if we copy it from there, and this is the way I do it, so slow and methodical. Um, I hope you don't mind in this video, I'm going through it at real time. If it gets a bit boring or whatever, you can just skip along. But as I said in my other videos, I just hate it when somebody comes along and clicks all these buttons and tabs and things and goes do 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 this and you're having to watch it in slow motion. So uh, I'm 62 years old. I'm not the quickest of people when it comes to things like this. So uh, it takes me a while. So I've created this folder here on my desktop, version 6 firmware zip. And I've created these two here ready for the unzipped version of the screen and the motherboard firmware. I've already got that in there, so I'm going to just delete them just to show you. So we've just got two empty folders here now, ready to put them in. So we're going to download it. Again, that's empty at the moment. So just to show you all these folders, right? we're going to download it to here. That zip file we've just downloaded. So if we paste that in there. Right, that's now the zipped file. Now, that is the zipped file of the motherboard firmware, but also in that zip file is another zip file for the screen firmware. So, so we don't get confused. We're going to unzip them to two separate folders. So, first of all, if I extract this extract files to this first one, the unzipped motherboard firmware. So desktop, unzipped motherboard firmware. Okay. Right, so we've now put that in here. Now that is the firmware we want, just firmware.bin. That is the motherboard firmware file. So that is what we want to put on to the SD card to update the motherboard first of all. All this one is referring to is the motherboard firmware. The screen firmware is in here, this zipped file here. So if we right click on that, click extract files that and this time We'll tell it to extract it to that folder, unzipped screen firmware. So in there, we've just got these files. All these are pertaining to is the screen. This one here, it's just that file alone we want. So just to make things clear, if we just put another folder here and put final firmware files or anything you like, like that, it, it may appear totally irrelevant to do all this if you're fluent with just putting this, that and the other anywhere, but it saves any confusion. So all we're going to put in there is this. 
copy that and paste it in there. And from the screen firmware one, all we want is this DWIN set. All these files here are showing you pictures of the screens before and after. And there's a, a readme text. If we open that, it's well worth reading all that. But the only thing we're concerned about is this here, the DWIN set and the entire folder. So again, do that and click in the final firmware and paste. So in here now, the final firmware folder, we've just got these two files, the only files we'll need. Firmware.bin, that's the motherboard one, and the DWIN set, that's the screen one. So what I'm going to do now is put just the motherboard one onto the SD card. So if we right click and copy that, open up the SD card, as you can see, there's nothing on there. I have found that you're best formatting that each time. I've used a couple of different cards. I'll, I'll explain this a bit more um, in in a bit in the, in the head to head bit anyway. But for now, we'll just uh, paste that in there. So we've now got that firmware bin on there. We'll now go over to the uh, printer first of all eject that safely we can now take that out okay so we've downloaded the motherboard firmware to the card now we're going to go over to the printer to install it and you will see on this as i mentioned in this bit of video as well that one extra added feature on this motherboard over the stock one is that when you're updating the firmware the blue light flashes in the hot end which is a great feature because it actually tells you something is going on and you're not just hoping it's happened so uh, we'll see that happening now during this video let's go and put the motherboard firmware on okay so i've reverted back to version 5 of the community firmware just to show you me live updating to the new version 6 and just to, to prove it we'll turn the machine on and if we look here it's control and info we'll see there that we're on in the middle there CR6 community firmware CR6 release 5 so this is version 5 of the firmware and I shall now show us live update into version 6. So turn the machine off. And we have got on our SD card here just the motherboard firmware. So we'll put that in the slot there. Put it in the right way around. It does help. Now, because I have now got the BTT, the Big Tree Tech motherboard installed, one of its features is that when it's updating the firmware, the print head here, the hot end, the blue light in it flashes, telling you that something is happening, which is an upgrade from the standard motherboard. When you were upgrading your firmware last time, there was no visual indication that anything was happening. You just have to trust it was doing its job. But now you will see... Fingers crossed this has worked. That when I turn it on and it's upgrading, that to blue light should flash. So, here we go. We'll turn it on now. And because it's got this card in now with a different firmware, it realises there's different firmware, it will automatically upgrade. So, I'm just going to turn it on. And if you see now, you can see the blue light there is flashing telling you if something is happening and that has now gone steady the screen has gone there but as you can see the TFT flash failed that's because the screen is now not compatible with that firmware so that's telling you we need to upgrade, update the screen firmware as well so 
and that is flashing now saying something is wrong so if we turn off now disconnect or remove the SD card with the motherboard firmware on and I'll now go back to the computer put screen firmware on it and come back and update the screen so we've got the motherboard firmware on now and we're now going to do the screen firmware now if you find that it doesn't quite take something doesn't happen on upload upgrading either firmwares screen or the main motherboard it can be the sd card now i used the same one that i showed you on my previous video on the firm uh, the version 5 firmware video uh, check out which one I used on that. But first of all, while doing this, I tried these two. This was an old um, no no name brand, just 16 gigabyte, very old, high speed one. But this one is a Samsung, so good quality, four gigabyte micro SD in the holder and it wouldn't work on either of them i tried it a couple of times and it wouldn't work on either so it is very very finicky what card it likes so you may have to experiment with a couple of other cards i've told you the size and how to format it and everything like i say in detail on the other video uh, check that out but if you find it isn't working just try reformatting them as well even between motherboard installation and screen installation firmwares instead of just deleting one and then putting the other one on you might find you have to totally format the card again between applications it uh, it has a, a mind of its own whether it's going to work or not so i'll show you it successfully working on the card that i mentioned on the other video um, but like i say it's up to you just try different cards if you do get a glitch so uh, we'll go ahead now and install the firmware for the screen right so we've now updated the firmware for the motherboard so this is uh, how to put the screen firmware on your sd card so again put the sd card in Now, I'm just opening this up because I've already done the update. I'm just showing you how to do it here. But once you've updated your firmware for the motherboard, this file will have changed its name. So when you reopen up your SD card, that will say um, something with that C-U-R after it or something. That just means that file has been used and uh, it, it will not appear like that anymore. So just if you're wondering why that file looks different now so we'll delete that file from it and we'll go into here where we'd saved them all and this time we want this set here the d win set so copy that paste it onto your card so this is now the D-Win set. That's what we want for updating the screen. So safely eject that and then we'll go over to uh, update the screen firmware. Okay, take that out. Okay, so we've now installed the motherboard firmware, but we're now going to install the screen firmware. So I've got the screen firmware, that D-Win set only on this SD card, and I'm going to put it in here. Now, I fitted an external SD card reader to my printer. Check the link above for that. It's uh, cheap enough to buy and easy enough to fit, and every time you need to update the firmware, you don't have to take all the screen off. If you haven't got this fitted, you will have to take the screen off as described in my previous video on updating the 
version 5 firmware so uh, have a look at that if you don't know how to do it but we'll put the sc screen firmware in there now and we'll turn on the machine and hopefully it works now as we can see the files are Moving up, there's been about one, two, three, four. First one is 001, the second one is 003, then 003, then triple O. So we know something is happening, but you just leave it now. I won't speed up this video or anything. You you leave it now until the bit at the top, the where it says SD card progress changes. I'll show you that very soon. So again, this is real time. Just let it do its stuff. And there it says end. And we have now got a flashing blue light here. So again, that's showing something has happened. So, as I mentioned in my last video, that uh, the word end exclamation mark, um, I think it'd be better if it said upload successful or something like that, because end exclamation mark looks like it, it may not have worked, but hopefully it has, which we shall we'll soon see. So we've got some files that are zero, 00, but some files are 001, 003 and so on. So let's see if that has worked. We'll now turn off the machine. We'll take out the SD card, turn it back on, see if it boots up. We've got the Creality logo now. So that's on. There's no flashing of the hot end. And if we look, it says there CR6 community release six final ready so the final version not the re, not the beta version of the new firmware and just to uh, confirm it info there in the middle so it all seems to have uh, worked okay so as you can see uh, both went successfully uh, it uploaded to the latest version uh, you're best going on Seb's site to look at every single bit of what is new in this version. There's loads and loads and loads of great new features. Far too many for me to explain. There's much better watching, uh, looking at Seb's site for that. Some of them I'm not even sure what they do. But uh, one great extra feature, I think, is the bed levelling. The information it gives you after it's done a bed level. So... Uh, have a quick look at that now and just I'll just show you the great looking screen once it's done that so like I said there's loads of extra features on this that wasn't on the other one but um, there's, there's much much too much to go into here like I say you best just look at it at Seb's site for that but what I will show you is the bed leveling and if we do that now you will see the difference between this We'll definitely see the difference between this and the stock Creality firmware, but also the difference between this and the previous version 5 of this firmware, because this gives you a reading in digital format on how level each of the points are on your bed. So again, it heats up the hot end just to get a more accurate reading, then turns off the heater just as it approaches the bed but i'll edit this video just so you see the beginning and the end and all the actual readings of the levels so as you see here it's uh, it started the bed leveling and if you look at the figure at the bottom you'll see it has the heater on but just before the heat the hot end nozzle temperature on just before it touches the bed it turns it off for an instant 
Again, that's to stop any interference with the circuitry in the hot end giving an inaccurate uh, reading because this uses the level sensor on this isn't your normal optical one it's actual a strain gauge that measures the uh, the strain as a nozzle touches the bed so to stop any spurious readings it instantly turns the heater off so uh, it can be as accurate as possible but you can see all the actual readings it's given and this is with my um, magnetic bed on it again look at one of my other videos to uh, show you that it's a, a really good magnetic PEI bed much better than the stock reality one but as you can see it's running through these now and we'll come back at the end to show you the result okay so here's the end result of my bed and as you can see all the figures are sort of green if we go down the vertical columns from one calling this uh, column one this column two so as we go down column three you can see that the last one there where it says point one it's a slightly different color it's like a turquoise color but all this vertical column column four they're all blue because they're uh, 0.3 out, 0.2 out, 0.2 out, 0.3 out. So this shows that this side of the bed here is the worst, if you will. It's either, um, I'm thinking they mean higher figures. This part of the bed is a bit higher. So to get it even, I'd have to sort of, I've tried to tighten all the screws underneath and, and they're all fine. But um, I'd have to sort of like, try and get it down or shim up this other but again you can get too anal about this trying to get absolutely spot on figures and uh, it's just no need I'm getting great prints no problems with uh, leveling and it's automatically stored that mesh in its memory now and will compensate in the future for it so it's uh, a worthwhile addition as well as the many other features and uh, yeah looks good as well so as you saw there lots of information on how level your bed is and there's loads and loads on the forum about people trying to get the bed absolutely spot on and that but i would say if it's not too far just leave it if them figures aren't miles out leave it that's the beauty of the se6 it's got auto bed leveling so you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be absolutely as level as other printers because it, it compensates for itself. But so as long as you're not a bus ride out, you should be okay. So say so all the other features I've not fully gone into, but it's been working like a dream. I've not had any glitches or any faults with it. And it's again, a very, very worthwhile upgrade. So to sum up this video, if you've got an original board, a 452 or a 453 board, would I change to this one? It's totally up to you. I don't think them boards are as bad as a lot of people make out. Undoubtedly, there have been one or two ones through, slipped through the net that haven't been so good. But my 452 early board worked fantastic. It never, ever went wrong. So... It's not totally necessary to upgrade to this BTT board. You can still use the latest community firmwares on the older boards. But it does have those extra features like the blue flashing light on the hot end that uh, tells you firmware is, is happening. One disadvantage is your red light disappears on the optical sensor for the, the Z-axis. But it is only the light that disappears. The sensor itself carries on working great. You've got the extra octo print um, connections and setups on it. You don't need to alter potentiometers with a screwdriver to set voltage for the stepper motors. Stuff like that. So, yes, there is some advantages, and it's evidently from what people are saying, it's a better built board than the original. But like I said, I have no problems with mine. So, the choice is yours, what you want to do. But uh, hopefully, this video has been of some use. If you do want to 
put a VTT board on it. So once again, if you like these videos, please subscribe by clicking the little shed here on the left. Loads more in the pipeline. I'll see you for the next one very, very soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.